Look at the strange vapour trails coming off the rear wing of these F1 cars. They are only visible in certain conditions, but are present whenever the car is at speed. It's the effect that enables flies to fly and the Concorde to reach such high speeds. They are called vortices and are a natural byproduct of an F1 car's wings. They produce a lot of drag and ultimately slow the cars down. However, over the last 15 years, F1 engineers figured out a genius way to control them and use them to actually make the cars faster. They even use specifically shaped bodywork to deliberately create the vortices, but only in specific places. So how do you create vortices? This is actually easy to explain with a plane wing. As you probably know, a plane wing creates lift by using a low pressure area above the wing. This then literally sucks the plane upward. You can see the low pressure area here where the cloud-like vapor is above the wing. You're only able to see this in certain conditions, but we will get to that later. But the interesting thing is that at the edges, this creates a strange effect. The air here is able to spill around the edges of the wing and so the air from below the wing is sucked around the side by the lower air pressure. This creates a tumbling turning effect, starting a spiral of that air and creates a mini tornado that trails off the wing. This is what we call a vortex. For planes, the vortices are a bad thing. They produce lots of drag, but are often unavoidable as they are a natural byproduct of having a wing. And of course, you need those. They are also naturally created on an F1 car. Back in the 80s and 90s, you could see them trailing off the rear wing, sometimes up to a meter long. The rear wing produces about 30% of the drag of an F1 car, and this is part of the reason. F1 engineers wanted to understand how to get rid of the vortices to reduce drag, making the cars go faster on the straights. However, they found that in other places on the car, vortices might actually be useful. Back in the 80s, the cars used physical skirts to seal off the air under the car. This enabled the engineers to control the air, keeping it energized and creating lots of downforce rather than the suction leaking away. However, these skirts made the cars notoriously difficult to drive and are now banned. So engineers began to deliberately create vortices with the front wing and then steer them carefully to seal off the floor. At the outer edges of the vortices, the air is going very fast and so can be used as a barrier to block other airflow. So how did they do this? The front wing of an F1 car works in the same way as a plane wing, just upside down, creating downforce rather than lift. F1 engineers put a load of strakes on the front wing and these would act just like the wingtips of a plane, creating mini vortices. Front wings create lots of these vortices and as long as they are rotating in the same direction, the vortices can combine, creating one big vortex. One of an F1 aerodynamicist's biggest problems is tire wake. The turning wheels create incredibly messy airflow. Turbulent or dirty air can't be used to create downforce as the air doesn't stay attached to the wing's surface. For this, the air needs to be smooth. So engineers need to keep the dirty air away from the important areas of the car, like the floor, diffuser, and rear wing. The vortices can be steered by bodywork, like the barge boards, and used to push this dirty air outwards away from the rest of the car. As there is nothing behind an F1 car's rear wing, vortices here only produce drag. These are the ones that F1 engineers do not want and try to design the bodywork to minimize their effect. So very interestingly, they are created by a slightly different effect than the front wing. To stop the vortices being created at the edge of the wing, the cars have end plates. These stop the air being able to go over the edge of the wing. Instead, the vortices are created when the high pressure air from the top of the wing is mixed with the surrounding air. This difference creates the vortices that trail off the rear of the car. Because the air on top of the wing is such high pressure, the vortices can be up to a meter long and create massive drag, ultimately slowing the car's top speed. The teams found two clever ways of reducing rear wing drag. One is by adding louvres to the side of the wing. This allows some high pressure air to spill out and gently energize the air around the wing, reducing the difference at the top. 
and the smaller the pressure difference, the smaller the vortex. The second way is genius. They actually create another vortex, but this time spinning the other way round. On the bottom of the wing, the pressure is lower, so the air from the outside wants to spill in towards the center of the car. They then specifically design another edge on the rear wing to create this vortex. This vortex spins in the opposite direction and partially cancels out the bigger vortex, reducing drag. As you know, low pressure is what creates bad weather like we are seeing a lot of at the moment in Formula One and when we're out and about. If you want to keep yourself warm and dry in poor weather, you should check out this week's sponsors, Fuel for Fans. They make officially licensed Formula One kit for the majority of teams on the F1 grid, plus from your favorite drivers. I personally love Lando and his kit on Fuel for Fans. They are having a massive Black Friday sale all this week, so now is the perfect time to check them out. There is up to 50% off kit from Mercedes, Ferrari, Red Bull and McLaren. There are jackets, t-shirts, soft shells like this, as well as loads of other quality F1 kit. Now is also the perfect time to buy holiday gifts. There is loads of kit to choose from and you can check them out with the link in the description. And be sure to use code DRIVE61 for 20% off. You can see the massive effect these vortices have when the DRS is opened on the rear wing. The opening of the wing decreases downforce, but also significantly reduces the high pressure air on top of the wing. It then reduces the pressure difference over the whole wing, with the effect being so big that the vortices almost completely disappear, shedding drag and enabling the cars to gain 10 to 20 kilometers an hour on the straights. I've driven an F2 car that had this system and it was like a weight was being taken off the car, pushing the car forwards as you gain so much speed. In these shots, you're actually seeing the moisture in the air condensing in the core of the vortex. As the vortex grows, no other air can get into the middle, so there is a low pressure area created. If there is enough moisture in the air, or the air pressure is low enough, the moisture condenses, creating water droplets. This is why you can see the vortices from F1 cars as well as the air above the plane wing. This low pressure effect is actually why they produce so much drag. It literally sucks the car backward, slowing it down. If you enjoyed this, check out these other videos where we take a look at incredible F1 engineering or this other video, which we think you'll love. Cheers, and I'll see you next time.